Hi everyone, I'm Jorisar and this is the battle report for LW Blue vs Combox Spirit from the round of 8 of Apex Season 3. This is of course a rematch from early May, where LW Blue were able to win their encounter 3-1. Let's see if Combox can turn it around this time. LW Blue's Pharmacy combo opened up our series on Nepal strongly, capturing the village control point first against the 2-2-2 of Combox Spirit in what would become a back and forth match. Luxury Watch's ability to reclaim the point with little investment and the unanswered nature of their Phara gave them the edge over their opponent, and Convox would need to adjust quickly if they didn't want to get swept on Nepal. The composition change came in the form of Twilight onto his signature Sombra for Convox, which at first glance still left them with few tools to answer the pharmacy that LW Blue continued to run on Sanctum. It worked out for the Konbok squad though, mainly due to Architect's ability to hunt down the supports with his Dragon Blade and valuable EMPs that would result in Konbok tying the map score 1 to 1. On the Decider submap Shrine, LW Blue set out again stubbornly with their Pharmacy, and Konbok stuck with what worked before, when in doubt put Twilight on Sombra. The map control Twilight provided limited Sabiolbi's ability to pop off on the Tracer for LW Blue and he did everything in his power to make sure EMPs left the pharmacy vulnerable to Architects dashing Genji. In a flurry of final moment activity, it was Sleepy Bear's Diva Bomb that stole the map point from Luxury Watch, killing two in overtime and tilting the teamfight in Convox's favour. A low energy start from the LW Blue Hog and Sombra composition on Eichenwald suddenly exploded once they had the ultimates they were farming taking A after shutting down Architect's defensive Nanoblade. With Luna swapping over to Sombra as well, Ramparts was a constant echo of EMP voice lines, but Convox held strong. Even when they had 6 ultimates, Convox budgeted them out frugally, using exactly what they needed to stem the tide of attackers. Their fantastic ult economy allowed them to recover even when Sabiolbi got a flanking pulse bomb kill, and also during the overtime push, when Architect cemented the cart in place prior to the second checkpoint with a triple kill blade. Conbox opted to stick with their triple DPS composition on their offensive turn, but the results were lackluster as their previously outstanding ult management seemed uncoordinated and left them with little to show for their investments. LW Blue threatened to full hold, forcing Twilight to make the swap onto the Ana, facilitating the capture of point A directly prior to the start of overtime. But that didn't stop LW Blue from aggressively holding the cart in place, and even spawn camping for over a minute and a half before Conbox regained control of the cart and made it into the Ramparts phase. With virtually no time remaining in the bank, the cart made some progress, but the teamfights were scattered across the map, leaving Conbox without enough people on the cart when overtime started. Conbox made quick work of point A on the first half of Anubis, but that's where the good times ended. Their 3 DPS Sombra composition found no weaknesses in the armor of LW Blue, except for an attempted ninja cap from Twilight as Sombra, which actually got them the highest control percentage of the round, up to 65% just short of the second tick. Their ultimate usage was questionable at times and desperate at others. On the other side, LW Blue's defense was smothering, coordinating dives and complementing ultimates. That saw them all the way through to overtime where they were able to rally to deny a point B capture. Swapping sides now, Pine's Widow may not have had the most effective picks for LW Blue's offense, but he did land the shots when it counted in crunch time. After winning the 1v1 against Architect Genji, Point A finally fell to LW Blue, but Point B would prove to be a whole other beast for them to overcome. Architect's Dragon Blade came in handy to prevent the first capture attempt, netting a triple kill and setting the teams into a holding pattern of dry team fights as LW Blue built up 6 ults and Conbox saved up 5. The old fueled battle finally happened in the waning moments of the round, and Conbox continued to hold as overtime approached. As the defending spawn times increased once overtime began, LW Blue started their final assault, leaning heavily on Flower's Dragon Blade and Sabiolbi's elusive tracer to get the capture progress rolling. They weathered the 2 CP war of attrition, battling back between the spawns, until a double EMP saw LW Blue come out on top moving the series to map 4 and match point.
One of their historically best maps, LW Blue set up their defense with an Ana, Winston, Diva, Tracer, Genji, and oddly a Mercy on Route 66, without either Farah or Widow. On the offensive side, Conbox's Mercy was accompanied by a Widow and three other DPS. The synergy of the defense would not be called into question though, as LW put on a clinic, breaking down the offense any time they approached Big Earls, with Gambler rezzing anyone who fell to the attackers. The cherry on top for LW Blue was Flower swapping onto Farah for the closing moments, coming full circle back to a pharmacy that closed out the map with a perfect two-man resurrect, following Architect Nanoblade 2K and a double kill for the Farah to end overtime and complete the full hold. With so little distance needed, LW's Mercy boosted Pine on the Widow and made quick work of the quad DPS defense from Conbox Spirit, easily pushing the cart past Big Earls and claiming the series win, taking a big step closer to the semi-finals. Conbox took a map off one of the tournament favorites and kept other maps in contention, but it wasn't quite enough today. To subscribe to the video if you've enjoyed it, go ahead and click here, and to watch the next one, you can click here. Thanks for your likes and comments in the meantime, and don't forget to share. I'll see you for the next match.